I welcome everyone here, and I would like to introduce uh, Soam Patel, um, who is a Kundiman Fellow and an assistant editor at Fence in the Georgia Review. Her chapbooks include And Never Mind the Storm, uh, New Weather Drafts, and An Aeroplane and Other Poems, and uh, two full-length collections of her poems have come out just this year, uh, To Afar From Afar and Ever Really Hear It. And Ever Really Hear It is really, really new. Um, it's just out. Um, and uh, copies of those books will be uh, available for sale after the reading, if you so desire. Um, I'll be sitting in the back of them. You can see me there. Um, but some Patel's writing, uh, it, it maps a sort of diasporic liminal space that I think makes us uh, lie to tell the truth. It makes us say we're home when we're not yet home. Because what else is there to say? Home nowhere and thus everywhere. Home in the north, west, south, east. Home enough to read the violence residing still 100 years later in their faces. Not yet home enough to knock. Because home in text is a mobile home that carries itself with it enough to see the ways one's seen. Poetry then is a way to reinstantiate a home prior to here, a way to fail to, and in failing to ask what each of these failings transpire between us is. A careful song of no body and body here. As Saul Patel writes, words continue to lift memories off the page, and measures are mixed with the acoustics of breath. It's my sincere pleasure to welcome so Patel to the Thank you, Louis, for that introduction and this invitation. It's um, the start of three days of reading with Lauren uh, in Wisconsin. So let us begin. I'll start with a few pages from To Afar From Afar, and as Lewis mentioned, um, it is very uh, obsessed with the notion of home and uh, sliding notions of home. And also, as the title indicates, um, it's also concerned with address, modes of address, um, you know, correspondence, um, with ideas of displacement, you know, one of the overarching questions of the book is, you know, how do you address the diasporic condition? Um, how do you address war that often causes that, and the displacement that often causes that as well? Mixed with always. Just before soldiers soak Black rain, hearts beat. Arrow targets end and moments speed up to stillness. The pocket full of empty hands, the engine, the road, edging with white lilacs to widen hand me down gestures towards a tamer shoreline. No more war. Days of rest, but never the newspapers. The color red reads in headlines, untimely deaths, filled fractal adverts, numb wound joy. Enemies manufactured by the man, something to write home. Fill in the blanks with a wanting eye. What could have come was peace. A wind carrying the tune of a new fruit budding. Mixed with always. Rusted cartoon youth, bent ears and buck tooth. We are some kind of epic. Resting in the shadow of a dictator's face. After the partition, he gathers up his men to flag you down. Preambles of a well-lit parade. The lengths of black tea arriving, of currants, 
For what are the distances the heart globes over? The boarding school where your father sent you allows one meal a day. Your mother sends food. The food never finds its way into your home. It's time to let the planes fly. Blow the whistle and begin to dig. You left town for that southern city where the radio fuzzes its way too far south. But you will return, and we will dance well. Rhythm matches eyes, eyes match hips, without any voltages or even music. On an other note, Midnight, your birthday. Your father sent a roll of quarters. We can go do laundry or walk on down to the bar slash arcade. The moon is a riot. Colors come down like curtains. Silver, orange, blue. The radio stays awake with old college rock tunes. Call in. Request your favorite song. What language? Okay means zero killed. The soldiers say it is so on other radios. The barracks shape up like dorm rooms do. Smelling of socks, how some boys do. Oh boys, oh boys. We skipped over cracks on the sidewalk. We've got our mother's back. distance and far enough now. I am near enough to you. There is no train wreck. It makes no echo, so if you hear it, hear it and forget. There is no threshold to enter or exit. We know our boundedness. We pretend that we never met. After you remember my name, you feel the need to offer me your neck, but only at the places where your hair is too short to cover it. We can leave any gate ajar. I have been sent here to join you. Here is a song for you and all the dust we've left for each other wherever. This is just a love song to hum in your head as the men at our destination ask us for our papers and you show them your soldier suit and your suitcase and you give them also your neck. And the sign says, long-haired, freaky people need not apply. You can't forget that lyric while I cross the border with lice eggs hidden in my head. Pretend our belongings don't become quarantined upon our arrival. Stop the offering of apologies, of your lips, of your ticket, of your blue passport. Offer each language you can speak instead, even the ones you think you forget, how to say, excuse me, in, or this is my destination, where is the hospital, or I love you. Wear chapstick when we kiss. Why can you understand me? Pretend you don't speak English. Perspiration and tobacco tunes with a new song, and we sing it like desperateness. A body underneath another body. We hear it, and we sing the wrong words at the wrong time. I laugh into your neck. We drink and smoke and drink whiskey until we fall into each other's laps. We pretend we understand what bounds us. We hang your scarf on our train car. We forget to hold on to health and vitality and happiness, but remember this song. We travel in search of nothing so that we may achieve the intelligence of butterfly. You know you should be alone, so move on. And so I splinter, break my head, 
offer my own dust to the stars. What I forget to do is grieve us. I pretend to understand now the veneer tones of, hello, how are you, I'm fine. I neck through strangers standing in a queue like it is just a matter of a sharp knife. You understand that I made a plan in case you cannot come with me, and I offer that plan on a notepad, now ink and sweat smeary. Words cheat us sometimes as song to sway with, a way for us to think there is no need to splinter, as upshots in which to forget. But contingency is a good tool for survival. Love is still arriving, and I did, I did forget your gait. I forgot your recovery. I am certain we have not eaten in days, so I offer a dressing for your wound, an occasion for return, an occasion for wind, our song again. It rang in my head all day, and I heard it on a train. I can sing it from the neck down to where we can communicate within great works. A bibliomancy of pretend. I can come to where you are, offer your doormat's remains to the driver. Would you have me cut your hair off then? Stand in front of me, have me hold it all above your neck before I cut it? We could use that sharp knife for something else after. We could pretend you don't hate how long it takes to restore a body after travel. I have so much to tell you. It's really hot in here. So I'll end with some pages from Ever Really Hear It. Uh, this is the first time I'm reading from it, so that's quite auspicious for you um, and me. Um, and so, as I told you about the question that arches to afar from afar, one that, uh, and we talked about this a bit in class today, but one of the things that was driving this was this question about, well, what is, what is the mystery of rock and roll for you, Solomon? What is it that, what is it about music that, um, Kind of keeps you going. Right? Why do you like it so much? So. Friendship Avenue rocks quiet tonight. Leaf falls aren't lonely. Lover, neither are we. Water in my glass turns blue for the sky. That place we never touch. Your memory as a thief runs off with my hat. When I wanted jazz, you sang the blues. We walked extra hours, the ten city blocks, back at Avenue G, where you leave me, sway, I keep singing. We like it this way. I see you with some hats on, hard. Darkness is a flashback, you say. I say, I am sorry, this is the way my mouth works. Your lips are cracked. Your hair is growing in the name of another Ramones inspired band painted on your t-shirt. Tell me how to read that faux hawk hairstyle without a second look. Produced to be always coming at you and then to reside in you, to push you out and pull you in. It makes anthems, some fake and some for real, depending on the level of belief and or stamina of the consumer. A certain heard radio melody from an idle car lingers like the smell of cigarette smoke. It becomes a backdrop for many stories since the 1950s. Some would say the origins remain unknowable by design. Minus the margins, it makes it easier to take. 
Any existentiality of fame and the yearning towards it by way of becoming invincible or inexplicable proves difficult to carry around without any gas money. Travel is necessary still, because if the kids want it, they'll get it and grow bigger every year. The goods, machines, are geared now so that this spectacle of decibel rebellion can remain regardless of. So this is a longer poem. This is the last one I'll read for you. Thanks for being here to listen. Um, and there's a sonnet um, kind of in the middle. It's a couple pages sequence. And there's a sonnet in the middle. And it was written after watching the Disney animation Steamboat Willie many, many times. Um, and I did that because I learned this thing about the American drum kit, the trap set that's on most rock and roll stages, is that so in the um, in the late in the like 1860s, or, uh, when um, the the Chinese coolies came to build the railroads, uh, uh, tr troops of Chinese opera singers also came with, and at places like the World's Fair. Um, jazz musicians and Chinese opera uh, singers would get together and collaborate. And what the Chinese opera singers brought to the Western uh, musical palette was the symbol that was um, vert vertical, not horizontal, right? And so with some innovation, the jazz players that were hired on the steamboats, right, you know, along the Mississippi River, and Steamboat Willie, as I know much better this for research, great, um, built the drum kit as a, a sort of, um, because there was a, a, a sort of limited space, right? And so to, they built a multiplayer uh, percussive instrument that uh, had used the, the hi-hat instead of the, the simple percussion. So every time you go to a rock concert, right, or see a trap set on the stage or anywhere, you, you know, if you didn't already, maybe you knew this, but it has roots in, in Chinese opera. Really neat. Drums. On the riverboat, over 100 miles, the ovens smolder like 2,000 horses pulling, pushing. One can't stop on this little flotilla. Free men are fugitive, scout before the women and children can follow for food north. Oblong instrument dances, trace virtuosity with binding to feet. Or the women dance for each other since face paint in this moonlight's so bright. Wooden slit on steam boat, wood won't stop at watermark for burn. Set in the ballast, set on the river so close to the water so safe where makers gather to gasp, beat, stop, then start back upstream. Skin to mend, impossible, into thread and bear it as the show must go on. Oh, Willie, wheel us in, the sound cartoon. Famous hand-drowned mouse stick a tongue out while three colors whistles blow in our colors. Parrot laughs, tobacco spit in the wind. The fob cow moves, each lifting belly twist. Lift this, lift this, eat hay, spray milk in face. Girl with guitar almost missed the boat, but her skirt lifted so not to make it so. Who was the note-fed goat turned phonogram? The open-mouthed animal with beat teeth, washing up potato skins for punishment. Lines stopped mid-rhyme. Couldn't be invented, so we mixed recipes, shared on cast iron instead. We fed, we break, entertain what we made. Cotton, cures, grain, pork, corn, languages, livestock, theater, disease. Clown faces. I sing in the stout charm of a woman on stilts, share lengths of silk and saying. If there were a river canary, we work singers would mock its sound. 
When I sing with them, it's snake-like, or the dragon. Snareless, triplets, symbol, shrill, and ritual. The sound has a structure, but I cannot translate to speak in any understandable setting. The boat is made of wood, fueled by fire, rides on the water. In between performances and a rationed recompense of boiled wheat, I would like to swim in the river, dry off on the shore, and take all I heard into the woods with me. There, silence could serve towards sleep. I won't call it a lullaby. We'll call it a song so the hermit will come to hear. Painted colors on the mask I wore, but every good boy does fine. Fierce is for night sky color. Even if the moon silvers behind my audience, I see them only, and I don't know if they are here to dance or to stare, but I remember. It's all an act. They're silhouettes when I'm alone. Thanks a lot. missing. So I'll read a bit from that and then I'll read um, more current 
stuff. Dear Robert, dear Redbeard, dear Spectre of the Great White Father, dear slaveholder, dear Confederate captain captured at Gettysburg, Dear dispenser of land, favor, semen, procreator of 20 children by three sisters simultaneously. Dear father of the Negro League pitcher. Dear farmer, schoolmaster, landlord, hired hand, log roller, surveyor, and manure shoveler. Dear singer, dear churchman and circus fan. Dear reveler at brigade reunions. Dear collector of sentimental poems about loneliness and redemption. Dear pointy-eared like Lucifer and bearded beyond Rasputin. Dear mythical Jim Crow defier, hero of my grandfather's childhood, who took him on the whites only section of the streetcar. He claimed this really happened, proclaiming these are my grandchildren and they're sitting with me. Dear diarist, dear widower, dear lonesome hunger, dear admirer of well-formed women, Dear inscrutable in the tin type beside your favorite half-claimed child. Dear tallier of payments, debts, work days, weather conditions, neighbors by name and race. Dear borer of wells. Dear master of omission. Heard a whippoorwill holler this morning for the first time this spring. Heard a whippoorwill holler all hands choking cotton. Heard a holler, a whimper. Heard a will whip her. Will heard a whip, whip or will. Will heard, hurting hers, whipping hers, sowing oats, whipping whores, stripping cane or Whelped her, willed her, a well and a hold. Dank of the dark of the hell of the hold. Choking cotton, caught in a yoke and a pull, stripped and caned for. Heard her holler, caught her, held her hand to the, held her head to the, whipped out the billfold. Heard a whimper this spring, choked or. Heard a holler, a hollowed out hold, whipped to a wheelbarrow, hell bent toward a hole, ripped from a wrapped in a gut wrench sugar hold. Question. So how did the women feel about this? Answer, don't guess they had no say. My great-great-grandmother's name was Peggy. Peggy rises out of sleep through the dream called blue, where all her kinfolk are wading through fields of blue. Even her father left in Georgia, her stillborn brother somehow grown, her niece who stumbled into the fire on Christmas Day and died with the vision of her white dress aflame. The aunt or uncle who ran off or was lost forever to the auction block. They are all wearing blue. Blue hats, blue shawls, and in the way they sing a song with no words deep from the gut, there is also blue. And bluely she creaks toward them in her calico blue. And now there is a dance. They are partnering for the quadrille. And the man they called Bo Peep cradles a banjo, strikes a tune blue. And her petticoat starched with hominy water and prisses too. And every time they stop moving for a second, the petticoats pop and pris giggles. And in Pris's eyes are flecks of blue. The log train shakes her into waking, black then dark blue, and she reaches for the kerchief blue, and she is stumbling toward the cradle blue, and cooing shoo shoo to the baby who is hollering now. One Sunday, the preacher prayed, Lord, let us all go to heaven where there'll be no log train. Hoo, 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 and a clankety clank, hoos, black smoke curling into the half blue. Um, let me see if I can find that one you mentioned. So, um, as Lewis said, about 20 years ago, the Sons of Confederate Veterans decided to dig up the remains of Captain Robert Wallace Hubbard. And uh, at that point, it was just some buttons and bones. 
and uh, we buried him and his white wife, and uh, they left his mistress. And, and as he said, they didn't ask permission from any of his direct descendants. Ceremonia mortium, the reburial of Captain Robert Wallace Hubbard and his wife Jenny in loving memory by the sons of Confederate veterans, April 25th, 1999. Early Baptist funeral service. One, introduction and background. Bob Hubbard placed his family cemetery on the old survey straddling the county line where he planned to lie forever with his black mistress at his feet and his white wife at his side. Two, death and burial. A backhoe unearthed buttons in the overgrowth, a few shards of bone. Who scooped them up? A backhoe bucking a black hole. Who segregated the family plot? Three, resurrection. Heard a whippoorwill holler, a whimper, a whistle, whipped out of the woods, a dart through the center. Four, collect of the day for the Captain Robert Wallace Hubbard Scholarship Fund. God the Father, bless these gifts and have mercy on your servant, Bob, who sent his daughters to school, Wiley College, Prairie View, said he didn't want them working in no white man's kitchen because he knew that he may share with you through your son, our Lord, who was once human too. Amen. Five, the dismissal. Pass by the caskets for the last respects. Passed on, passed through, passed into, passed beyond, passing, present participle, crossing over to never come back. High military service for the dead. One, receiving the deceased. No one will say what happened to the marker on Peggy's grave, the cement cover Bob or their children laid. Two, the procession. Even in death, rebels can fall perfectly into step. There is Major Jimmy Littlefield, the quartermaster, and barefoot John Stevens following the bagpipers, and Bob's nephew Ike, recently reburied, still 24, still dashing and dying in his uniform, winks at Bob and says, it's only matter. Three, blessing the cannon named for Captain Hubbard. Bless this cannon with its rebel name. Expect an expansive range. It shoots straight, but don't forget to aim. Four, the graveside services. Into the ground we commend these buttons. Button up what can't be shucked. What goes down must come up. Five, the internment, dismissal of the artillerymen. The Houston Highlander Bagpipe Band, Amazing Grace. Hubbard family reunion and picnic on the grounds, excluding direct descendants, some colors out of bounds. When the genographic project says, I am more Scandinavian than African, I don't know how to feel about it. If I went to Denmark in this skin, this smoking cyclone crown of frizz, and declared the findings, who would they convince? I'm told I am more Scandinavian than African, and wonder where this belongs in the half-built book I am no longer living in. Bob Hubbard was always gathering moss for the mud cat chimneys he raised over Polk County. A county surveyor knew where lines bent, did he leave behind a genetic map? Bob came through and made everyone kin, one of my cousin's laughs. From Emma Haynes' History of Polk County, 1937. When the camp was established at Moscow, every house was closed and Negroes paraded up and down the streets. The next morning, four Negroes were found hanging to a tree. The Ku Klux Klan would control the Negroes and did to a great extent but the citizens were kept in constant fear of a Negro uprising. Oh, that people loved peace rather than war. 
and the book I built where I no longer live. Some nights hummings in the walls, not wind hissing through chinks, but a human song that shifts in sleep and dips into a low diphthong. Peggy. That moon ain't hiding, clouds a shawl, moon's cold as brass tacked upside night's frock. Pin your tears to her, they'll sing like chimes. Or ghosts that cry. Sometimes I feel I'm almost gone. Ghosts charred in dead men's lust. Think I'm some fool, got brains of shucks. Since freedom, I've been through the toughs. See, one moon casts your shadow twice, once toward the bottom land, once toward the pines. The winds write smart, but moon, she sly. Look, lightning bugs, they spark, but they cannot catch fire. So that's from Descent. Um, I don't know. need volunteers for this next part. Can I have maybe six people? Me too. Three. Anyone who's come up. <laughs> Um, roll a die, and I'll just read the side. Do you, do, you need more, do you need two more people? So? I'll go with these. That's fine. Okay. This is the title. Sorry, I'll read the title. All right. Between a dragonfly and an osprey, and there's an epigraph from Chi Wan Choi from the Yellow House. In the melody, the breaking was faint. But it was there like this love between a dragonfly and an osprey. You can have two rolls because you just start. One splits to ride a balustrade, flinging five o'clock shadows in our way and prizing rockfish from the banks, shad and blue backs primed to eviscerate. An osprey ferries fish to boxed in nests, and I'm a boss box that smells of cedar and wax, iron, rye, and sass of frass, ink and score sheets from boulder dash. I'm a draw bridge above you that writhes and contracts, dripping Tyrian purple on your lips and neck. <laughs> All the house is caterwauling, with dangling A's, brays that dodge in faint breaths, that meet, mingle, vacillate, climb, rock, and catapult, crowing into outer space. Now a monthly ache breaks to gravy, womb and belly or the grave, dagger twisted to the hill to tortured stabbing, and all my body again is rattling, gawking golly at its gears and grates. Gray bay, some shushed Monet, and in the port of pain, a snow globe docks, full of crouching cats and widows' walks at the ready for shaking up. Whoa. <laughs> I already read this one, didn't I? I'm going to read the reverse side then. If when sunset seeping, my body of windows gasps and cracks, maybe a wind window is inside out. Maybe it was hung like a song with a chorus torn out. Between the wind, O, oh, and the frame is a gap. The gap is expansive, glad handing all the intruders or guests. One is a snarled lullaby drifting out of a throng. One is a sodden name for thorn. One is a Katie did playing the role of a leaf. She's given away by her tremulous wings. She plods across my pillow, drags one rear leg like a bum deal. Every window is a sejura. Every maimed Katie did is a gap in flight. I was impersonating a maple leaf in autumn, feverish and brash, until I lost myself in the camouflage and got blown back. 
Maybe window is a portmanteau of wind and owl. Or is it wind and awe? Yeah. Or is it wind and awe? Since you tore the floor out from under me, I have taken to levitating. I just recline, and the air beneath me calcifies. It is holding me up like an oath. It is holding me in like a song. Have you ever heard a song rocked in the breath, in the hull? It's rising between the ribs of the boat. It's driving in the pitch of the pulse. Thank you. Um, I was going to read it all in order, but now I'm not sure if we have time. Do you want to? <laughs> I, want you, I want you to read as much as you want to read. OK, I'll just read it all in order. I'm confused because we started late. So between a dragonfly and an osprey, and thank you, everybody, for rolling. In the melody, the breaking was faint, but it was there like this love between a dragonfly and an osprey. She went joy from the yellow house. If in the blue noon my body of windows gasps and cracks, all my shutters rattle like a storm's approaching fast, shutters of ankles and hips, shutters of toenails and skin. Rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, shutters groin and arching back, lips, elbows, rat-a-tat, and all my jams gowl like feral cats, frames bloat, heat struck, Pains convulse, contract, implode, aspirate, and shatter, ack, ack, ah, ah. And above, beneath, within, between, you're asking a question that blooms in me like a tulip, and I am begging you to inhale its sepals all at once. Can't you see this gaping hole where a wind, oh, was? And now, yes, slowly, pluck. And now, yes, slowly pluck, ow, mow, the feral cats outside cry, convulsing heat struck to saunter off and lie and wait for us. You're pulling all the consonants so only my vowels can purr and plead, winnowed out of me. Outside they roll and wrestle, roll and shriek. And now slung high, higher, all our lists and problematics, posturing and panics heave to the high flung seas. And the doors unjammed, the windows falter, and all the house is caterwauling. All the house is caterwauling with dangling A's, braids that dodge and faint breaths that meet, mingle, vacillate, climb, rock, and catapult, crowing into outer space. Now a monthly ache breaks to gravy, womb and belly, or the grave. Dagger twisted to the hill to tortured stabbing, and all my body again is rattling, gawking golly at its gears and grates. Gray bay, some shushed Monet, and in the port of pain, a snow globe docks, full of crouching cats and widows' walks, at the ready for shaking up. At the ready for shaking up, rag time packs its punches on the packet yet. A syncopation pitched one up, feet pound, torso, cocks, and now a breeze parts the afternoon like Moses leaving the Red Sea, and you beside me impersonate ducks, rock, 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 like a motor, while real ducks paddle by three single file, and a fourth struggles a yard behind. And we are three, jittery, drifting in and out of focus, backlit at the prow, and we're two, rising in and out of depth, who've clung together in fits, buffeting a four-poster bed, and I am one, pulsing mimosas and piano jive, mouthful of hair whipped from behind, head bopping two, four, time as the river breaks three ways and one splits to ride a balustrade. One splits to ride a balustrade, flinging five o'clock shadows in our way and prizing rockfish from the banks shad and blue backs prime to eviscerate. An osprey ferries fish to box in nests, and I'm a box that smells of cedar and wax, iron, rye, and sass, a frass, ink, and score sheets from boulder dash. I'm a drawbridge above you that writhes and contracts, dripping tyrian purple on your lips and neck. 
dripping teary and purple on your lips and neck. I've again fallen back upon the spread, buoyed by tales of lucky crossings and horseshoes mounted upside down, cathedral naves and buttresses splayed to wake the day. We're reeking maroon on the room when you angle from the side, swift, eyes wide as skylights closing in, and the whole world's gone cerulean. Gone the world, cerulean or not. Lost a toss, a coughed up a shock. If I loved you, I loved you staggering in lurch. If you left me, you left me the last wind up clock. It won't stop ticking, aspirates, though my lungs have been plundered and my heart's a ruin of gears that won't budge. There are springs hooked into me that I can't unhitch. They grapple and claw. Burnished blunders glow like coals. The cock caws, but it cannot crow. So many fears I've caught and saddled, boldly straddled, then I've been thrown. Then I've been thrown into the pitch, an unhinged beam split and raked to silt. My long arms evaporate, lean spleen distends, thrashes my gut, a jilted sail passing wind. I am docked in a burnt out dream. It rocks underfoot, writhes in vertiginous seas. I want to levy a tax on trust, moored in glass, shored in tin and teal, splint a ring. The din is marvelous. The din is marvelous. Air thick with buzz and cackle, thrum and trill, too stiff to breathe, up chuck gulping muck. Have you seen a shuttlecock gag? All agog in flight and awe, chokes biting the net and falls. I won't be felled, and you? Roiling in blue. Sunset bleeds into the line of hickories, flexes, its shriveled tourniquet seeping. If, when sunset's seeping, my body of windows gasps and cracks, maybe a window is inside out. Maybe it was hung like a song with the chorus torn out. Between the wind, O, oh, and the frame is a gap. The gap is expansive, glad handing all the intruders or guests. One is a snarled lullaby drifting out of a throng. One is a sodden name for thorn. One is a Katie did playing the role of a leaf. She's given away by her tremulous wings. She plods across my pillow, drags one rear leg like a bum deal. Every window is a sejura. Every maimed Katie did is a gap in flight. I was impersonating a maple leaf in autumn, feverish and brash, until I lost myself in the camouflage and got blown back. Maybe window is a portmanteau of wind and owl, or is it wind and all? Or is it wind and all? Since you tore the floor out from under me, I have taken to levitating. I just recline, and the air beneath me calcifies. It is holding me up like an oath. It is holding me in like a song. Have you ever heard a song rocked in the breath, in the hull? It's rising between the ribs of the boat. It's driving in the pitch of the pulse. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.